Okay, I want to welcome everybody to our Amherst community chat for Thursday, March 4th. Today we have special guest an Amherst native, Jennifer Moyston. Um, Jennifer works on the human resources and also town managers team here in the town of Amherst, um, as well as serving as one of our community participation officers and a staff liaison to a bunch of different boards, which we'll hear about shortly. Um, we wanna welcome Jen and thank you for joining us despite having a big to do at the dentist this morning. Uh, we appreciate your dedication, so, um, so welcome. And uh, I wanna remind people in the room live that uh, we will have opportunity for question and answers. So feel free to familiarize yourself with the Q&A function in Zoom or raise your hand in Zoom and we'll be able to um, call on you and hear your question. So before we um, have Jen introduce herself a little bit more, I would like to invite Paul Bockelman, your town manager, to give any up town updates. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Brianna. So yeah, so our focus, so much of our focus on, on across the team is about vaccinations. It includes everybody from you know police, fire, health, senior center, town manager's office, uh, communications, everybody is involved in one way or another with helping our residents get the, the vaccinations. Um, we have a really good system set up, um, led by our health director, Emma Dragon. The frustrating part, th part for us is that there's no supply. We, this week, we got 280 vaccines. We're prepared to do um, five, five times that many um, during the course of a week. So it's, it's kind of frustrating because the need is there. Uh, our, our residents really want to get it. Um, we are a uh, partner with Northampton in delivering the vaccine in Hampshire County. Um, right now we're delivering it through the bang center and typically what we do is we, when we know how much supply we're going to have around 11 o'clock on Monday, we open up the registration portal and people can start registering. One of the deals that we have made with the state, if we were to become a regional site is that our site is open to anyone in the Commonwealth. Um, so, oh, but the announcement that we're happy is that we've done over 5,000 vaccines so far um, since we started, which is a really good number for a, a town our size and um, really proud of everything that people, how everybody came together, put this through. Um, we don't have high hopes for huge amounts of new vaccine coming down the road, unfortunately. It really is a supply and demand. And even though we know that the Johnson Johnson vaccine has been um, uh, approved, we don't see large numbers of uh, doses of that vaccine coming our way anytime soon. That's, a, that's the single dose vaccine. Um, I was on a call this morning, a state epidemiologist, and they basically said, yeah, we're getting some, but not. it's not, it's not a game changer at this moment in time. So hopefully uh, we're prepared when they do unleash more vaccine and we're able to deliver it, we're gonna be there help, helping to do that. Um, so I think, um, oh, there's a few other things I do wanna mention. Um, we, this is a great week for us for uh, grants. We received a significant grant, 194 to something like that, 190 some odd thousand dollars to redo the steps near the, between Johnny's and the Bang Center and create a, uh, a, a, a walkway that's a handicap accessible walkway down from Clark House and Ann Whalen up to that section of the um, Boltwood garage um, to do additional sort of seating and stuff like that on the uh, Boltwood, Boltwood garage, um, that first level there. And also to fix the, um, the walking path in front of the bank center that goes over to um, where the university the Unitarian Church is. So um, lots of improvements. It's, it's, it's a big number, but it doesn't go very far when you're doing major construction like that, but we're excited about that. We've gotten um, a cybersecurity grant from the state where uh, all of our employees will be trained in cybersecurity. You probably have read some things where people have hacked into um, any place and, and really cut, disrupted the operations where we haven't had that experience. Um, it's not like we're not being attacked, but our, our IT department has us pretty locked down and has good protocols in place. But we also know that many of these things insinuate themselves in through user error. We wanna minimize the amount of user error that we have. We got a grant uh, in conjunction with the Business Improvement District. And this grant specifically was to hire a consultant um, to help us re-envision what should be happening in the downtown area. So we'll be moving forward on that. Um, 
and the last thing I want to mention, and we can talk more about all these things during the course of the day, the afternoon, um, was that uh, we will beginning be beginning outreach on our Pomeroy Village Mass Works grant, another one point five million dollar grant um, that uh, will redefine it or rebuild uh, the intersection either as a roundabout or as a signalized intersection. And we're talking about what are what do people find are the issues that they want to see addressed with this money in that intersection. That's really going to be our focus. It's not going to be a, do you want A or B? It's going to be like, what's the problems you're, you you identify as going through that intersection, either as a driver or a pedestrian or as a bicyclist or whatever. And what, so that will help inform us and in, as we move forward. So that's usually longer than I normally do, but there's a lot going on in our town. There is a lot going on. And um, some of those items that Paul mentioned are up on our website if you want to dig into them a little more. Um, and we will also be putting up some project pages for these initiatives for people to weigh in and share their um, opinions on some of these bigger projects and initiatives. All right, so I want to put um, Jen in the hot seat now, if she can introduce herself, um, give us a little bit um, a history about what you do. Um, I mentioned you were an Amherst native, so feel free to talk about that too, if, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So yes, my name is Jen Moyston. I have, am the administrative assistant for the town manager's office and the human resources department. And I've been here for about eight years. Um, I was raised in Amherst. I've raised my boys here, so I'm definitely go team Amherst, right? <laughs> All the way. Um, and so yeah, working for the town has been really great. Um, I'm working really hard on, on community engagement and, and opening up the doors um, for communication from people that we don't typically hear from. I, ha I have a couple of questions too, and I just will remind our live attendees, feel free to chime in with questions for Jen, for Paul, for myself, or just general questions um, at any point. I wonder, since the, the community participation officer role is relatively new, considering your tenure, are there things that you've learned about this community through, through your work um, in that role that you didn't know before? Or anything oh, that surprised you? I mean, so I just remember we did an engage, a community engagement event with the schools over at North Village, and I was just mesmerized by the amount of different languages that I heard in this one little area right we were out in a parking lot and we created a fair and it was just it just really made me realize how many different languages and how many different cultures that are here in Amherst and so it's like how can we celebrate those how can we acknowledge those um cultural differences for people do you want to talk a little bit about some of those those things that you've learned along the way that you've kind of brought to to Amherst for the first time um, I believe one of the one of the cultural celebrations that was new for the town um, this year was the Lunar New Year that you kind of oh, brought, yes. brought forward. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. And that was a great learning experience because I have always known about the Lunar New Year, but never really knew um, about it in detail. Um, so that was great. I worked with um, the, the Chinese ministry from First Baptist Church and um, created a whole PowerPoint. And basically the Lunar New Year comes from the story of Nan, who was like this monster that was in the village and he would come down and terrorize ev you know, everyone, um, including the children and the animals and, and the residents. And so people started putting up red curtains, which is why often in the Lunar New Year, you'll see the color red as it kind of held him back a little bit. Um, and then the it it just kind of grew from there. And, and um, it is actually like a 14 day celebration. It's not just the one day. Um, so that was fascinating. The other one that it wasn't celebrated by the town was Kwanzaa. So that's always been a lot of fun um, to celebrate Kwanzaa. And um, I'm working on a, we're working for the Human Rights Commission is working on a, because it's Women's Month. And so we are working on acknowledging um, a specific, one or two specific individuals in the town. That's great. That's really great. I, um, I, I wondered a little bit about, do you think you could talk about some of the internal 
equity work that's happening for staff that we're trying to, to, to build mm -hmm. um, as the co-chair of our equity team? Yes, so we, um, you know, I think the whole group in general is a um, firm believer that in order for us to create this inclusion, inclusive, welcoming community that we need, that we need to start here within ourselves um, in town hall and with town council and, and it'll trickle down to all the staff. And so we're starting there um, with the fundamental 101 training and then we're for, for, for Sorry, that's the whole, I went to the dentist this morning. Future. We appreciate <laughs> workshops you. To, um, future workshops to come. Um, and we're really just digging in into how to make the town inclusive. So it's also very interesting because I feel it's very important that we work with our surrounding towns with that as well. Like as you think about it, like we have a plastic ban a plastic bag ban and if you go shopping in Hadley you can get a plastic bag and so the hope is that we can work Hadley has their own core equity team Belchertown has their own Pelham has their own and so I'm I think I'll be looking for Mr. Kravitz and Miss Gannett to see if we can get <laughs> some rolling over on that side um, mm -hmm. so that we can kind of have like this our little tofu curtain of of inclusion and equity here, and then it can just spread farther and farther throughout the Pioneer Valley. I really love that that idea about thinking about other communities because that can al always usually be a very introspective process when we're thinking about our own policies and staff. So I think I think it's really valuable that you were able to work in that lens of that this is a community, we're not an island, and how that impacts us, um, how neighboring communities impact us as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the core equity team is really important because that was really a grassroots driven group that came from employees getting together and saying, we want it. The town does need to become more welcoming and need to talk about it amongst ourselves. And, and I think that that's been a really um, powerful thing. We, you know, we did gr join the GARE group um, nationwide and, um, but this is a group that's meets, you meet weekly um, and uh, it's an, really uh, challenging discussions sometimes and some you know sharing and things like that so it's 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 people who are really dedicating their time to to work on some issues and it is something we need to be focused on it's broadening out to the entire um, employee base for the town that's great yeah I agree and I think I think Jen's perspective and her work with the Human Rights Commission and with the Community Safety Working Group and just her interest in being in training in this space I think she's provided a lot of structure and framework to some of the work to allow the team to move it together in one direction. So I just want to give a shout out to, oh, to Jen on that. And it's, um, uh, <laughs> so that's really important. So I, I know um, right now we mentioned a couple of the different boards that you liaise with and that you support um, Human Rights Commission, the Community Safety Working Group. There might be more that I don't, I'm not even aware of. Do you want to, um, talk a little bit about what you do for those boards and committees and how um, that interaction is and what you do to support them. I think the only other one that you're missing is the Munson Memorial. Oh, right. That's, that's they, the they don't meet as often as everyone else, but. Sorry, Munson. <laughs> Munson, <laughs> yes, um, which is a beautiful space too. So we should acknowledge that, but um, yeah. So for the most part, I do administrative, um, support for the meetings and since we've gone to uh zoom meetings i support and you know by allowing people to come in and out of the meetings for speaking purposes and we and what else do i do for them i don't you know it's you do a you lot do it every day you don't really yeah. think about it right I, like i just want to jump in here because jennifer does a ton of stuff i hear i can hear her from my office on the phone you know a plus plus customer service because this this office gets every complaint possible, and sh and people walking it. In the old days, people just walk in, and you didn't know who was going to walk in the door. And her ability to work with people and be where they are and listen is just off the charts. Great, I've learned a lot from Jennifer and how she's uh, interacted with folks. And then all these initiatives that you've heard are things that she's either invented herself or said, let's do something about this. The core equity team stepping forward with the human rights commission, stepping forward with the community safety working group. That's Jen saying, I'm, 
I'm doing this. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to make it happen. Um, I think that comes from her, you know, she said she has two boys. She's been a football coach, a basketball coach, and every kind of coach possible. And if you're already a coach of a bunch of kids, you have to be organized and ready to deal with chaos. <laughs> That's sort of what, what this, what true. this environment is. That is and true. So we call her coach Jen, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's nice to work with the committees. Um, but, you know, I, the interaction with the community is always nice. And then also, you know, with the community safety working group, because they're the newest and it is a group of people who we don't typically hear from in town hall. And so it was really nice to have them engaged. And then it's like, okay, so how do we keep this momentum moving? Like, uh -huh. and then we have to realize like maybe a board and committee is not everybody's cup of tea. So like, what are the other things that we have to do? Um, and sometimes that's when like the human rights commission comes in, in the hands because we like to do the cultural events, which is been really great and we get great participation i think for our first lunar new year celebration we had about 30 people and at kwanzaa we had about 50 so it it's you know and there works in progress but all of these things i'm hoping are things that will stay rooted here with the town so that if i'm to leave or retire that they will still continue and they won't just you know fade out so mm -hmm. gotta make them remarkable and I think, I think that's a, a really valid point with, with what that work and other elements of our work is that sustainability, you know, you get mm -hmm. these great ideas and how do they get traction and, and, and keep going um, year over year. So um, I want to remind, there's a couple new people who've just joined us. Please feel free to come in and ask your questions through the Q&A function or raise your hand for Jen, for Paul, for myself, or any just general questions for the town. Um, we've got about 10 more minutes on our chat, so feel free to chime in. So one thing that um, happened for you recently, Jen, is you were featured as a uh, local government employee um, for the state of Massachusetts through a campaign called Mass town careers, highlighting um, different people in different roles in local government. And I wanted to hear about your experience with that and um, kind of what was your message to people when you were taking part of that campaign about working in local government? Yeah, so that was a great experience. I got to go out to Worcester, which is has a, it's a beautiful city. Um, they have a beautiful town hall area. It's really great to go out there and work. Um, but I will say the, the overall message was just acknowledging that municipality is a place of, is a, has a workforce and we're always seeking to hire. Um, I don't think that people typically, on average, my work through the human resources department doesn't necessarily make me think that people think of working in the municipality. Kind of maybe they might've seen it, you know, through an advertisement or such. And then like, it's like, oh, but I, I highly doubt anybody wakes up and says, I wanna be a comptroller. So <laughs> for the town, like, it's just, you know, it's not very rewarding, but this is a very satisfying job. And, you know, I, I'm going to say it, that gov local government is a lifetime of learning, right? So there's always something to learn. There's always something changing. There's always something we have to adapt to. So it's just been eight years of learning. I can't think of a day that I went home and didn't learn something new. And what's your take um, on, you know, the current state from what you know about local government in different cities and towns, do you feel, how are we doing in, you know, diversity on staff? Do you have any opinions or you think that recommendations or where we should be moving towards? Yep. And so I think that all places are looking to diversify and everybody's looking to find out how, and I don't necessarily know that there's like an, an actual answer to that necessarily. Um, there's efforts that you can make, but I don't know that there's like a, this is what you do when you will be diversified. And then also, you know, diversity is, I find to be more of a, a measurement tool of your inclusion. And so if you have equity, then you have inclusion most likely, and then you have your diversity, then you can measure your diversity. So I think it's important to kind of view it through those ways. And we, you know, if you come into town hall and you don't have the best experience, you're, you're not going to want to engage with town hall. So, you know, a big thing is that customer service for the people who are front facing with the customers and making sure that people all come in and, and have a good time. Sometimes people on the outside are just having a bad day. Sometimes we're having a bad day. I mean, I've got a whole swollen <laughs> side of my face here, you know, but you still, you know, 
you still have to keep that smile and be professional about it. And um, usually when people come in, they're frustrated, they don't understand. I mean, the COVID concerns line is definitely um, showing us that people are really concerned. And it's like, you know, you can't really be upset about that. It's like, we got it, right? We're equally frustrated too, because we're told we're going to get vaccine and then we don't get the amount that we, and then we can't service the amount of people that we wanted to. And so, um, but, you know, it is really important that we're answering the phones here and we're in, enjoying that because I know a lot of communities are just so overwhelmed. They are not quite sure how to respond. And so. What are some of the things that you've been, you know, as one of the, the core team who's handling those requests and calls and concerns that are coming in, what, what are some takeaways in the last couple of weeks? You know, what are people worried about? What are people thinking about? Oh, I think most people are worried if they'll ever receive a vaccination. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the number one question there. Mm -hmm. And I think that at some point, they everybody will who would like one. I just don't know that it will happen in, in the speedy manner that people anticipate. So, you know, if everybody, including the people who are answering the phones and, and, and are at the vaccine clinics, just kind of take a deep breath and and everybody will get vaccinated in a... Mm -hmm. But I know it's scary. Like I understand for folks, especially our elderly, that it's it's a scary thought. It's also the whole process hasn't been easy for folks because they don't. It's it's not hard to register, but you need to have a computer in front of you, and you need all the information. And it, it initially, when you couldn't get very far, you get locked out, and you have to start over. And you know, the frustration level was very high. And then, you know, they would call our number and get Jen or Angela or somebody and or uh, Kay and um, just to just to emote and just the ability to sort of say they're not yelling at you, they're t they're worried, they're frustrated, and so being able to respond back to that is a really powerful thing. And we get a lot of um, a lot of happy people who are just glad somebody answered a phone, so mm. that's always nice too, right? Like we are mm -hmm. here and we are ready to answer your calls. No, I think it, I think it yep. is a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna you know the hard jump off of what Paul said was the hardest part about it being in an online sign up is that we have so many people who don't have computers and that don't have access to the internet and then so at the same time it makes the vaccine as an equity issue mm -hmm. as well right so you know some people had loved ones that could call for them and others could call for themselves and others could register but there's still that population that that is out there that doesn't have any of the above. Mm -hmm. I think just the, the sheer volume of, of calls and emails that our team gets is just a testament to your um, excellent service mm -hmm. skills. People know that they can call for other reasons. And then when, when the vaccine questions arise, they know that they can get a trusted um, source of information from, from our team. So um yeah. Good, so good of, job. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things the team is doing is we're doing actually uh, vaccinating homebound um, people who can't leave their home. And um, again, health director, the um, assistant fire chief and paramedics are going door to door and for just people who just can't leave their home, but really want, want and need the vaccine. And it's, it's a time consuming process, but it's highly important. So I think that they're, and they're, we're serving lots of different communities doing that. I think today is Belchertown. Um, and then, so um, we've done Amherst, we've done Hadley. This is a program that nobody else in the state is doing. So I really credit our team for pulling that together. Um, and, and, and the other thing you know, that Jen mentioned is finding those communities that have language barriers or, or just hard to reach is another high priority for the town and figuring out how to get um, vaccines available and making it and the ease of access to vaccine is the key piece for that. Right. And I just, I'd like to just give a shout out for us for being so willing to take on this on a regional level, right? Because it's, that's, it's pretty hard. Mm -hmm. and, um, it is hard work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do have a, call, uh, a question that just came into the room from one of our live attendees. So I'm going to read this now. How is the town planning to respond to the student parties related to the Blarney blowout? Has the event been canceled or will we have to, or will we have to have town staff on the streets to shut down parties over 10 people? Thank mm -hmm. you. So I'll take that. Um, so yeah, so Blarney is not something, we don't call it that obviously anymore, um, but it's not something the town ever schedules. It's a, it's something the town has always prepared for. It was 
it was sort of a, a, a social um, group sort of thing that, that we're going to have a party this this day and we um, this year it's different than all the previous years because um, there is no spring break this year and typically this party would happen the weekend before spring break um, and so in we don't know when the party we anticipate there will be parties especially as the weather starts to warm up um, so we're responding to preparing for this differently previously we could concentrate all of our effort onto one day and the university did the same um, this year is will not be that uh, we're going to be spreading out our um, responses the town will be um, paying attention to noise complaints that we receive and just having more of a presence with our COVID ambassadors being on the streets and they're actually going out Friday night, um, uh, tomorrow night to start to educate people about the limitations on what they can do in terms of gatherings. Uh, and these are students and other people who are um, not police officers who are going door to door in key areas to say, you know, it's not time to party. You can't do that. So. And the university is fully behind this and are, you know, are prepared and have taken action on students who don't abide by um, the, the um, prohibition on gatherings. And, and for the person who asked that question or anybody um, who's interested in two weeks on our community chat, we'll have Captain Gabe Ting mm -hmm. and community liaison officer. I gotta get all these titles straight, um, Bill Laramie, um, on to talk about just that, about the preparations and the warmer weather and um, how they'll be addressing some of these concerns. So feel free to tune in on March 18th at noon. We'll be talking um, about that topic specifically. So um, it looks like we're coming up to our last few minutes. So usually I give our special guests a chance to plug something, give a call to action, talk about an important thing that's coming up. Um, I don't know if you have anything that you want people to be aware of, Jen, but now's your, your chance and you're on mute. Oh. There's not a Zoom meeting that that doesn't happen to me yet. <laughs> so the Community Safety Working Group are getting ready to create recommendations or write up recommendations for what they feel um, public safety should be. So folks should definitely send in if they have recommendations on um, their recommendations. And uh, I'm sorry, my mom <laughs> just, um, and uh, let's see, I think that's about it really is the community safety working group and oh they also have a survey online so uh, if you want to share your experiences it's at amherstma.gov on the website on the community safety working groups page they have awesome. a lot a lot, of, a lot of work to do over the next six weeks and so it's and they we meet weekly and jen's coordinating organizing each one of those meetings so yeah, they have a big task ahead of them and just to, to Jen's point, if you want to head to their website, there's a playlist of their um, all of their meetings. If you need to get caught up on anything, the survey can be found there, um, agendas, minutes, and all of that. Um, Paul, how about you? Anything you want to leave people with before we wrap? No, I think it's, you know, the our numbers are not going down, unfortunately. Um, so we're um, continually reevaluating re where we are in terms of um, the state. The state is opening up more. The federal government is looking to do that. We're a little bit out of step. And so we're going to be continuing to, to evaluate the numbers that are coming in for the town of Amherst uh, and UMass. And we'll take appropriate action. At this point, we're st we are in, in step with the state, uh, but we're open to getting out of step if our numbers don't improve. All right. So I want to thank um, Jen for joining us today, even though she had a, a dentist appointment that <laughs> <laughs> impacted her day. So um, thank you for joining us and thank you all for uh, joining us live. And we will have this up on our channel uh, shortly. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See Bye. you next week. Bye.